Okay, so let's have a look at the file structure that we get when we download something from the RD Textures homepage. So we're getting an ambient occlusion map, uh, which we can use to enhance the shadows maybe a little bit more later on if we are not completely satisfied. A bump map, uh, of course. We're also getting all maps in 4 and 8K, so we can choose if we really want to go uh, full resolution or maybe just a half resolution, maybe to save some, some RAM and uh, stuff like that, depending on your machine, of course. Um, then we're also getting a color map, we're getting a depth map, which we can use later on uh, for displacement, of course. Color map goes into the diffuse channel. Uh, then we have a glossy map, uh, which we can use, of course, in the specular channel. We're getting two different ones. Uh, we're getting a normal glossy one and a high glossy one, uh, really depending on how much we want to have those roots, in this case, want to have how much, how much light they pick up, uh, how much highlight they will get. Then it also comes with a normal map. Uh, if you're maybe working with Unity, uh, Unreal Engine, uh, Cry Engine, you name them, uh, you can use those maps, of course. And then we're also getting a roughness map in 4 and 8K, uh, which we can use in the glossiness channel or in the roughness channel, really depending on which render engine you're using. They're all called differently. Okay, so these are basically uh, the maps that we are getting, and I will show you now how to set them up correctly. Welcome to part two. And here, just simply want to set up in Cinema 4D uh, a basic lighting setup uh, that we can use uh, later on to see a little bit better uh, how the displacement works already. So I will just simply create a plane. Uh, fair enough, we don't really need more. We create an area light. So let's go area light and then we also create a null object. And we will bring this light here a little bit outwards, just something like this. Uh, bring it up, drop it into the null object. Let's maybe also turn it a little bit more down, maybe something like that. And rotate it here, something like this. And then we go now into the null object, into the coordinates. You can see that this light will perfectly turn around as soon as we rotate the null, which is pretty good, so we can uh, light up the displacement from all kind of angles and see a little bit better what's going on. All right. Okay, all right, so let's set this up. Let's just simply bring in a Cinema 4D Octane Light Tag to the light. And let's also start the Live Viewer. And let's see what we get. Okay, power 100 is way too much, so we need to change this down maybe to 15 or something like that. I think this might be a fine value. And let's maybe also bring the light in a little bit more. Maybe something like this. Let's maybe change this down to 10. And what we also want to do is we want to change this here from direct lightning, direct lighting, which you pr probably have right now, to pass tracing. And yeah. This should basically it, and we can start to load our first maps. Okay, alright, so let's create a uh, shader, Cinema for the Octane Octane Material. And let's jump into our displacement. And we need to load a Cinema for the Octane Displacement thingy here. And then we need to load here in the texture a Cinema for the Octane Image Texture. And in the Image Texture, we will load our depth map. I think I did just close that here, which is not so good. Uh, let me just open up the map again. And we will load our depth map, like I said, 8K. Drop it in here. Perfect. And let's make sure when you're working with Octane that you always set the type here, when you're working with black and white maps, that you set the type here to float. Because float uh, will only uh, load black and white values, uh, while normal will load uh, the normal RGB thingy. Uh, and this will cost you a little bit more RAM on your graphic card in the long run if you're using a lot of those maps. So it would recommend that you always set this here to float. Okay, so let's drop this here onto our plane. And I think I did just get rid by accident of my light setup, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so let me create this um, Octane material quickly again. Uh, really kind of crazy. I don't know why this happens to me all the time. Really no clue. Okay, so let's load this in here again. 
uh, oops, no, this was wrong, image texture, and let's load this in here, okay, perfect, and let's drop this onto our plane, go to the live viewer, and let's see what we get, let me also make sure that I have set this here to pass racing, yes I did, okay, so as you can see, um, the height is not really perfect yet, so I think I want to go up here with the height a little bit, so let's maybe switch this here to 20 centimeters. And we're also getting a little bit here of jagged edges and stuff like that. And we also don't have so much detail. And this is because here of this level of detail. Uh, since we have loaded an 8K map, uh, it would also be recommended that you set this here to 8K as well. And as soon as we do that, you can see we're getting now all those really fine details. And you can see how great those maps really look. Uh, I mean, this is really absolutely an amazing amount of detail and yeah of course what you can do now is you can play um, uh, around with the amount a little bit more you can give it even more amount a little bit less really depending on what you are after in your shot and yeah this is basically how you set up a displacement map in octane and in the next chapter we talk about roughness and the specular color so first of all what we need to do is we need to switch the type here from diffuse to glossy so we're getting here some roughness and a specular channel, of course. So as you can see right now, it's uh, kind of glossy, of course, because we don't have loaded any maps, so it should be 100% glossy. Let's maybe also set the index here to 1.6, so we can see a little bit better what's going on. So as you can see, really, really looking glossy here. And in the roughness, we will just load a Cinema HD Octane image texture, as you might have guessed, and we load in here the roughness so as you can see not so glossy anymore because this shot was also taken on a really really dry day so it wasn't really wet outside so this is absolutely correct and in the specular we do the exact same thing so cinema for the octane image texture and here we load in now our glossy map let's load in the high glossy 8k map for this and this will give us the final look so as you can see really looking kind of dry but this is just normal if you look here at the uh, demo shots that Chris has created so really really dry shot dry day so yeah this is just normal if you set up those maps and this is also how the shot should look later on i will show you how you can create a little bit more of a wet look on a, on a rainy day if you really want want to do this yeah but this is basically how you set up the roughness and, and specular map inside of Octane. Nothing really fancy, nothing really complicated. And in the next chapter, we will talk about bump mapping. Okay, so first of all, let's zoom in here maybe a little bit more to uh, one root that is lying down here on the floor. And let's go to the bump channel. Let's load an image texture, as you might have guessed. And by the way, right now we have 1.048 gigabytes. Uh, let's maybe change here the specular uh, back down to float and also the roughness back down to float. And as you can see right now, we are only using 689 megabyte instead of the over 1 gigabyte. So if you're using more RD textures, um, this can really, really help if you're working with Octane so you're not running out of RAM so quickly. So let's really do this float trick. Okay. Enough of that, let's load our bump map as well. So let's go to the texture spec. Uh, let's go back to the textures and let's load our 8K bump map and you will see this will really add a lot of detail to the shot. And let's also set this here to float. So from 954 MB back down to 753, which is cool. And yeah, this just simply adds a lot of detail here to this uh, to this displacement as well. So as you can see here, really those fine details, pretty, pretty nice. If I will set this here to zero, you will see that we will lose a lot of detail. So yeah, this is exactly what's happening. I would recommend that you go maybe with a value of something between 0.3 and uh, 0.5, really depending on how close you are to the, sh uh, to the displacement, of course, or to the geometry. And also depending on what you want to achieve, of course, and if you're doing an animation, of course, you can also animate this bump value here accordingly to the camera distance. Um, even maybe a, um, 
a value of 0 0.1 might be just fine. I think this might be also the right value. I would maybe go higher here, maybe a little bit something like 0 0.3. And uh, yeah, this is basically it. So again, nothing really fancy, really, really easy to set up. And yeah, this is how you set up the bump map. In the next chapter, we will talk about color and image occlusion. Okay, so let's load our color map. So let's go image texture and let's drop in our color map here into the diffuse image texture. And this should give us our final look on this picture. Let's maybe zoom out a little bit and let me now also get up here with the light a little bit. Let's maybe change this here to 20. Let's maybe even let me change this here to 40. And now we can really rotate this light around and see how beautiful those textures really do look. Uh, absolutely loving those. I mean, they are best. They are the best maps worldwide that are probably available uh, for this placement map. So they really, really should look good, I guess. And uh, yeah, so this is how we set up the color. Um, nothing special here. And we can also set up the ambient occlusion map, of course, if you wanna enhance this shot even a little bit more. And we can just simply make here a multiply. So let's drop in a multiply here. And in the multiply, we can then just simply here drop another image texture. And in this image texture, we can drop our ambient occlusion. So let's do this. And this will enhance our shot even further. So as you can see, this ambient occlusion map really brings in a lot more shadows, uh, uh, a lot more detail in the dark areas. Let me get rid of this ambient occlusion map again, so you can really see the difference. So not so much black going on here anymore. But with this ambient occlusion, we can add this back in. And this is really, really nice and works pretty, pretty good. The normal diffuse map has already mixed in like something like 10 to 15% ambient occlusion. But like I said, if you want to enhance this more, just simply do this here with this multiply technique. Load this ambient occlusion map down here. And let's also set this here to float again before I forget about it. So we're really saving some RAM here. And let me check if I did this do this here for the bump map as well. Yes, I did. Okay, so that's perfect. For the diffuse map, for the color map, we don't want to change this here to uh, float because otherwise we will only get a black and white output and our color will be gone, uh, which is not really good as you can see here. So the only map that we really need to leave here um, as a type uh, to, to normal is the diffuse color map and of course also the uh, normal map if we would be using this. Okay, and in the next chapter, I will show you how we can adjust these maps a little bit more inside of Octane. With a little trick, we can enhance those maps, like I said, a little bit more. And let's enhance maybe, first of all, this uh, ambient occlusion map, maybe, if you want to. So let's just simply put over it maybe um, a color correction. And in this color correction, we can um, here play with the gamma a little bit. So let's say I want to have a little bit more ambient occlusion because if you have a really, really high displacement or something like that, it might be that the displacement breaks a little bit and you get, again, those um, checked edges and stuff like that. Um, no matter how good a map is, a displacement map is, and our detectors are probably the best worldwide, um, at some point, if you have a really, really high displacement, the geometry just simply starts to freak out a little bit. This is just normal. Um, but with this ambient occlusion map, you can try to hide those uh, checked edges and stuff like that that is going on a little bit more. It's, of course, um, there to enhance the shadows a little bit more, but you can also use it for this. So let's play here with the gamma. Let's maybe bring this up here to three or something like that. So as you can see, we're already getting here a lot more shadows. If you would bring this up to 10, this would turn really, really black. And if you don't want to have so much, we can also bring this down here, maybe to 0.75. Or let's go extreme, let's maybe bring it down to 0.1. And let's bring it down to zero, so no ambient occlusion map will be used. We're only seeing here the shadows from the light. And let's bring this back up to normal value to one. And this is what we basically get. So this is how you can play around a little bit uh, with this ambient occlusion map, with this simple technique without really changing this map inside of Photoshop, uh, which might take a little bit more time, of course. And we can do the exact same thing here with the roughness if we want, if we want to. Uh, just simply put over it here a color correction. 
and then play around with the gamma. Let's maybe set the gamma here to 10. Or let's maybe set it down to 0.1. Uh, we can do the exact same thing here with specular. So let me bring in here the color correction. And let me bring this up here to 10 maybe. Which might be a little bit crazy. And now we can play here with the color, uh, with the roughness as well. Let's maybe bring this up to ten. Um, yeah, there's just simply a lot of stuff that you that you can play around with. We can also could control those uh, maps a little bit differently if we want. So let's just simply go back. Um, let's get rid here of those color corrections. Uh, we could also just simply make here Cinema for the Octane uh, mix texture. Bring in. Uh, Let's click here on texture on the amount. And let's just simply drag and drop this image texture up here to the amount. And here in the texture one, I will just simply load a float texture. And then drag and drop this load texture also in the texture two slot. And then with those uh, white values here, I can control the roughness of this map. Let me deactivate the specular for now, or let me deactivate the specular map so we can only see the roughness here. And let me also deactivate the bump so we can really see the roughness. And now we can control the roughness here with the black and white value. So let's say in the dark areas of this map, I want to have, I don't know, a roughness value of 0.01. So really, really glossy, as you can see. And in the dark, uh, in the, or let's say in the bright areas, I want to have 0.01. And in the dark areas, I want to have something like, I don't know, let's say 0.3. Whoops. Oh, I think it's the other way around, sorry. And this is how I can also control uh, my roughness maps if I want to. I can also change this here back to a higher value. So let's go 0.9. So everything where this map is really, really dark, it will now have no glossiness whatsoever. And everything where it's bright will have a lot of glossiness. But if I change this up here to 0.8 here, you will see the roughness is now really, really gone. Or the glossiness is gone. So we're getting back here a little bit of more of a diffuse look. Let's maybe also change this here to 1 maybe. Uh, whoops. Or maybe here to 1. This will really give us this diffuse look again. And if we put up the bump map again, it will even be more bad. So as you can see here, no glossiness going on whatsoever. Uh, yeah. So those are two techniques how you can control those maps inside of Octane. Um, the color correction one is of course the faster one. Um, if you want to have a little bit more control over those maps without jumping into, into, into Photoshop, you can of course also um, use this technique that I just used with this mixed texture and those two float textures here to control maybe some certain spots on the map a little bit better. Okay, so I hope uh, you learned a little bit something and know now how you set up those maps correctly um, that come with RD textures. And yeah, that's all I had to say. So have a nice day and bye bye.